we're having so many reasons, so many theories have been uh, thrown around as to why the, uh, the presidency may be foot dragging. Although we have heard comments from the National Assembly members and even the presidency, and they say, look, it's no big deal. Uh, we are still working out the modalities in the budget. And, but then many people still argue that, look, yes, you, we know you could be doing that. I mean, we praised you initially for you know, uh, putting that budget together early in, you know, on time. Late on time. Uh, that some, hadn't been done since 1999, I, I, I hear. And then all of a sudden, we have this sudden delay. And so people, you know, people believe that you know, it's mixed signals are being sent out. What is the problem? Are, they, are there issues we should be concerned about? What are your thoughts on that? I, I really don't think there's a huge problem, really. Um, and you rightly said it, um, the budget process went as planned from the process from the core circular in June up till October and then getting to the point where by 20th December, I believe, uh, the appropriation bill was uh, actually signed. But that's the beauty about the whole process. The whole process is that we move fast enough, but there are some key issues, some of which you mentioned. And there's a typical horse trading that happens, and that's why the, the, the process allows for the possibility whereby the president can continue to run the country for up to six months while those issues are being... No, it's taking money from the Federation... Uh, no, no, it's, he can continue to work <coughs> based on the previous year's budget okay. while, while these issues are being fine-tuned. Um, the House typically uh, should, uh, should naturally um, go to the extent whereby they say, look, there are certain issues they do not agree with. They do, there's not a rubber stamp uh, institution as well. But the executive must also, at the same time, feel very strongly about certain, uh, certain core points to establish maybe its own fiscal uh, regime. Now, the challenge for the fiscal year 2013 is that uh, we're basically working off the fiscal year 2012 uh, budget estimates for the next few months, as it were, uh, which also might impact um, uh, execution and budget uh, uh, expectations. That is assuming that the whole purpose of putting the budget together is designed to achieve some peculiar and specific goals. Now, are those goals going to be hurt? Were they the same goals we set for ourselves in 2012? Obviously not. I, I, I feel the need to bring it up again, because if we're talking about $4 extra and the, the uh, National Assembly, they do have a point. They say they want to use that extra uh, uh, $4 on top to plug the budget deficit. But like the finance minister did say, that at the end of the day, it still translates into money. And this money is going to go directly into the banks, into the financial system, as it were. And that might cause, you know, uh, if that inflationary effect. And we know that the central bank has said that it would respond appropriately if that happens. And we know what that no, means well, when the CBS that, says that. that, that. that, that that's uh, a that's, uh, that's, uh, man in charge trying to send a message to the problem. Look, I think the, the, the most important thing to understand is that there's a bit of po there's a politics of budget. I think we should gain an understanding you of say that. politics of budget. Doesn't yeah. that create a perception problem? Because, uh, like I mentioned, like we said earlier, the, the National Assembly or the, the, those there you know, were praised for that early presentation the presidency, all of a sudden there's a delay and then there's all kinds of stories. Sometimes our economics and our best intentions does not survive our politics. And that's a reality we must come to. And I think the stronger is, is the message for the business community is to, you factor these things into your expectations. It will be ideal, but yet we do not live in an ideal world. Um, um, the sound bites would be natural to just go out there and make a lot of hula balu and noise and say that the budget is not being signed. No, the process is part of the democracy, it's part of the learning. So you're saying there's no perception problem, there's absolutely no reason Look, for America, to Look, America hasn't signed this budget. America has Obama a did not present a budget for, uh, for in 2012 until about a longer period. Um, in the United Kingdom, it's a huge challenge as to the little details inside the budgets as well, which uh, issues of taxation, issues of this. I think what we should be talking about, if we have to discuss the delay, should be the principal basis of budgeting itself. How are we using taxation as a tool of, uh, of, of, of uh, taking fiscal decisions in the economy? Look, I that, that, that is part, that will be part of element in talk, talking about uh, no, those are the things we should be discussing. But the, 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 not the so budget much itself hasn't even hasn't crossed that hurdle. See, so after it crosses that hurdle, then we be, can begin to talk about see, our revenue generation. We are talking about a budget not government. being passed, but the, the components or what drives that budget is not being discussed. Do you know? You know one of the most beautiful thing about the whole budgeting process is that you have some independent assessment. I believe that it was Honorable Fashiro who was moving that thing sometime when he was in cabinet, uh, when he was in the House, 
for them to have what you call an independent congressional budget office, whereby it guides them and it produces an independent position on this. If you had such a thing there, it would have come up with, like they have the CBO in the United States, whom we model our, uh, our democracy after, and then you would have come out and be clear to say that, look, are we discussing ego problems here, or are we discussing fundamentals here? In between the two is what you have right now in the country. I know the part of the uh, uh, Constitution, I think Section 54, Subsection 4, says uh, that the President has up to about 30 days to assent or not to assent. And then for the next six months, he can actually you know, tap from the revenue allocation. If it works. Time is not up legally, at least within the legal framework, he, he still has time. If it works for them, days. they wouldn't pass this. So you're saying personally, you're not concerned, because you're part of the private sector, you're not concerned, you believe that I, up I there in Asu Rock, things are well concerning concerned. this budget. I, I am not overtly concerned because I understand that the politics of budget means that there are certain positions taken in that budget, which if the president were to ascend to, uh, he, he will not feel comfortable with. And there are certain things the presidency wants which the House naturally would not. Those issues are about five or six items. And I think the whole process, especially from a reputable group like Nigeria Economic is to offer the middle road whereby these gentlemen can do their horse trading and get us moving on. Uh, it's not like it's a, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a gulf no one can bridge. But I still think that it, is, it boils down to one singular issue. It boils down to ego. You said there were several, quite a number of saw points. Uh, let's just take uh, the three of them that are major, uh, the 63 billion addition, the, uh, the budget, the oil benchmark, and then there's one, that's zero allocation of funds to the Securities and Exchange Commission. How do you think both parties can get around this? Because the National Assembly, the Senate, House of Reps, they've made their position clear. We haven't heard anything from the presidency. I know we have been there before. We are going to go back there again, Femi, and you're going to tell me how you think both parties can get climb this mountain. Look, if you look at it, I mean, the budget, uh, uh, the benchmark is is, is, is is a key point. But I think there is um, the unspoken big elephant in the room is that zero budget allocation. The House has drawn a line in the sand. It wouldn't cross. The presidency is determined not to allow that to happen. And so how do you want to, to, to cross that bridge? So we can talk for all we care around all the other issues, but there's a very clear line in the sand which nobody is ready to compromise on. But they have to get there one way or the other. They can't, keep, they can't kick the no. can. They can only kick the can down the road for so long. Exactly. We have to get... We have, so for you, what, what, what's, a, what's a likely scenario? Likely I'm sure you've, 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 you've turned it around in your head. No, the likely time. scenario is this. If we, push, if we push the issue and we stretch it to its logical conclusion, and even if the presidency goes ahead to spend up to six months of 2012, at some point, he will have to go back to the National Assembly. Do you see us crossing that six months? I mean, heaven forbid we get to six months, but do you, do you see us getting to it's that point? It's an interesting scenario. It's an interesting scenario. Because there's a lot of politics going on. No, there is an interesting scenario that I, I, I believe has a lot of teachable moments for us. But most important thing, however, is that the, legis the National Assembly and the Presidency would have to sit down and resolve this issue because the line has been drawn. The appropriation bill has been passed. So there's now, no if the Presidency the sends it back to say, look, I will not assent a signature to it, it stays there. If that happens, what happens that you say it stays there? Shed more light on that because that is actually one likely scenario. The Presidency says, you know what, we looked at it. This, this, this doesn't sit well with us. Correct. We don't want it, so let's, you know, let's just do something about it. That's why I said it's a teachable moment. It, it is, it is um, a scenario we've never experienced, and I, and I would love to learn from it as well. For if sure. I knew the answer, I would be giving it. But I am clear as to what the questions we should be asking are. And I'm also clear that at some point, maybe we haven't realized how significant it is, is that the line has been drawn. Once the line has been drawn, and we've, we, we are working around the precipice of uh, uh, the, the legality of uh, uh, the process, the whole process, you now have to find some horse trading. And that's the whole process, that's the whole beauty about the budgeting process. But in this case, both ha both, uh, uh, you have concurrence. Once you have concurrence on a position, 
Where do you go from there? The presidency at some point would have to understand that it would have to reach out. And I think that this is where you understand, and some people have said it, that where you have a, a functional party machinery, you would expect that the House, a National Assembly, both the Senate and the House, with majority members of the President's ruling party, should therefore be actively seeking for ways to make sure that the country is placed far higher than every other person, and they find a way to, to work around this way in such a way that all parties are, are, are respected in, in the resolution. And, and so that if everybody looks good at the end of the day, it, may, it would make sense. But I, I do believe that beyond saying, though, pass the budget, look, let's deal with the issue. The line has been drawn. There's a major... They must know that. You've said that several times now, but obviously both parties, they must know that that line has been drawn. I'm, I'm, Yet it I'm sure. I'm sure we would not be going into a centenary uh, having to re rewrite uh, the reason why we are a country. But I'm sure they, they, would, they would recognize and, I'm, and I think that's part of what you're doing here, is that it is a significant problem. And let's leave the drama out of it. It's a significant issue. And we discussed it the last time, even maybe not in so much uh, words. The, the, the place, there's a place for ego. There's a place for hostility. And there's a place for the well-being of the nation. And at some point, leaders would have to realize that there's so much politics you can play without necessarily sacrificing uh, uh, the, the institutions that we need to run. 